Hey everybody, welcome back to another Alpha Pixel tutorial. My name is AJ and today we are going to be talking about a script I made called the Save at Render script. And what it does, as the name implies, anytime you hit the render button, it will automatically in the background save a copy of your scene along with your render files. So if you make a still or an animation image sequence or a QuickTime movie, anything like that, it will automatically save a copy of your scene with that output. And why is that useful? Well, first of all, you can never have too many copies of your scene laying around. I think we've all been there where we try to revert back to, you know, an old copy and it's either been overwritten by autosaves or it's just hard to find. Typically Cinema 4D files aren't that big, you know, maybe a few megs at most unless you're doing some kind of internal caching where you might not want to save a copy every single time. There are easy ways to bypass it as well. And the second reason this is super useful is in After Effects or whatever compositing program you have, it makes it super easy to find the scene file that rendered out your file. I'll show a quick example of that here in a second. First, I just want to show you quickly how it works. And as I mentioned, it is a script, so you will find it up in the Script tab, User Scripts, and the Save at Render Scripts. And there are three of them. There is one, so Save at Render, SAR, Save at Render Picture Viewer, Render Queue, and Team Render. So there's one for each, and what I have done is I've gone into the Customize Commands, and I've just completely replaced the uh, Shift-R hotkey, which is normally just rendered a picture viewer, but I've set it to this Save at Render Script one, which it does the exact same thing. It actually uses the command to render to picture viewer, but just adds a little extra code to go ahead and save the scene. So what I've done then too is also mapped the old render to picture viewer to Alt sh or Shift Alt R. So anytime I don't want to save the script out or save the scene out with my files, I just hold the Alt key along with it and it does not save my scene. Alternatively, you can dock them up here and just click on it whenever you want to and know that anytime you click that, it will be rendering to the picture viewer and saving your scene. So I've also built in the code a requirement that if you have your render settings, if either this save is unchecked or this save is unchecked, then it will not render the file. Basically, if you're not going to be saving files, it's not going to save the scene with it. So for it to actually save out the scene, you need this checked and this checked. And then here I'll show you, I have this animation folder on my desktop. So in this folder I have my After Effects project and I've already rendered some files just so I can show you why this is useful in After Effects. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna override, a, say a single frame here. So I'm going to hit the Shift R to render here and notice over here you'll see when I do that, it's going to create a folder called Scene Render and it will contain our scene file where it is at this current moment in time. So I'm gonna hit Shift R now, and it's gonna ask me if I wanna overwrite, yes. But you'll also see that it did make the scene file here. So now we have a copy of our scene. Although this time I just rendered out one file, but it will, and it will save all of your settings and everything, so. So another thing to note really quick is that you save your scene out and it's unchanged, it's just going to overwrite that render scene file. Um, but if you do go ahead and version it, you've made some tweaks and now you're on version two and hit save, then you'll see that it's going to go ahead and create a new scene file for that scene output. So if I just jump to five, hit render, you'll see yep, we get number five. So that way you'll have a scene copy for every file output version you make. Now I'm gonna jump into After Effects really quick and show you also why this is super useful. So here I am in After Effects, just a basic, really basic comp for this basic scene. And normally your After Effects does not look this clean, so I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this to simulate, you know, maybe a typical scene you're working on with a bunch of different renders, different versions, and all of that. So in your comp here, you have this animation, and maybe you have a few of these, you know? Some different versions, some turned off, you know, you're chopping things up a little bit. And you're thinking, you know, you're in the middle of working on this comp, and you're like, man, I really just want to change the color of one of these cubes. And typically, your scene file is not always named the same thing as your render output. So 
to go back and find exactly the scene file that made this is going to be, you know, it's doable, but it, it could be tricky if you have a lot of files. So in After Effects, one of two ways you can find that render file super easy is either select your files here or up here, and you can right click and go to Reveal, Reveal and Explorer, and it will find, it will find where those files are. And sure enough, in the file output, you have your render scene. And now you have, you can easily find your Cinema 4D file that correlates to your render file and just open it up really quick and tweak it and save it out again. No having to dig around for the file that created it. So if you hop back into Cinema here, before, so this is actually an update too. This script's been out for about a year and I've been using it and I have just been absolutely loving it. Just knowing, just having that peace of mind that, you know, your script is saved. It, you know, it's all happening in the background. You don't have to think about it. It's just there. And to always know that I can go back to the Cinema 4D scene that rendered these output files is just such a weight off your shoulder that you don't have to go digging around for any of that. But before I actually had it um, output the name of the scene file, which was more confusing. And it's just so much easier to have the scene file be named the output of your actual rendered files. But also feel free to go in and tweak the script. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, you can change the folder name, you can change you know anything about it that you want to. Totally open source, so have a you know play around, take a look at it. And of course it will be available on the website in the freebies section. So let me know if you guys are liking it and uh, if there are any questions you have about it, definitely feel free to let me know as well. And I'm always down to you know improve these things so and I want to say that I do actually have a, quite a few tutorials and freebies planned for the future here. So definitely check back, stay tuned. Again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.